Well, how about how about we have some fun, guys? <laughs> okay. Let's have some fun with the New York Times op-ed page. Yeah. Woo. Okay. Woo. Okay. Uh, so let's let's, let's let's get these juices flowing, guys. Uh, opinion: Is this man the antidote to Donald Trump? Maybe one super rich old white guy from New York can save us from another super rich of old white Makes guy. Sense. From is that New supposed York. to be like self-knowing, like tongue-in-cheek? Yeah, of course. Okay. This okay. is the Frank Bruni. Okay. Okay. It takes a billionaire to know a billionaire. What if it also takes a billionaire to take down a billionaire? Wow. I've al- always said both those things. <laughs> I mean, those it's two like common sentiments that it takes a billionaire to know a billionaire. <laughs> yeah, it rolls it's, off the tongue. It's a the billionaire plot. in the bush is worth two billionaires in the hand. It's the plot of every cop movie. You need a you need a bad guy to catch a bad guy. Coming this fall to Fox, billionaire cop. <laughs> Frank what Bruni kills sort of, billionaires. Frank Bruni writes with the grace of a overweight 13-year-old boy making his way onto the slow dance floor. <laughs> 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 The thing I love sort of clunky, but just a little too self-aware, and it just makes everyone feel bad. The best thing about Bruni is that that's supposed to be the most valuable intellectual real estate in American media, right? New York Times op-ed page. These people are talking, opining to an audience of millions about politics. They shape the, the agenda of the day. And they just took a guy who spent his entire career going, wow, these ravioli are really fluffy. And said, hey, you can talk about politics. He's a fucking food critic. How did that happen? I always... I. I don't hate myself enough to actually do this, but I want to go back to Frank Bruni's old food columns. To I kind of do, as, too. See if he's as dumb about food as he is about this. I yeah. kind of do, too. I'm just curious. We should do that for a reading Frank. series at some point. There's so many Franks. There's yeah. so many Franks. It would be funny if there was a, if there, you go back there and the, the Bruni uh, restaurant review is like, the food was great, but I, I was uh, lost for 15 minutes trying to find the bathroom. <laughs> it's probably like similar harebrained ideas to his political concepts where it's like, you know, I think that Hardy should make spaghetti. It's gonna be, <laughs> okay. It's got, gonna be like an entire Colin on him choking to death on a garnish. <laughs> you got Frank Bruni, Frank Rich, Frank Booth. <laughs> okay. TV's Frank. Thomas Frank. Tom, oh, there you He's, go. Mm. That was the theory. Okay, so what if it takes a billionaire to take down a billionaire? That was the theory behind giving Michael Bloomberg a prime speaking spot at the Democratic National Convention. <sighs> and it worked! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, it it's like, don't you stop writing at that point? It's like, oh, right, that's, they lost. That's when it become re- became relatable. It's like, that's, that's when right, everyone really clicked it in. It didn't work. Never mind. My idea was stupid. I'll start over with a different one. I mean, they lost because not enough people saw Michael Bloomberg's speech. Right. I mean, that's, that's, how, little, that's how little these guys give a shit. Like, this guy started writing. He got to that line, which any one of us with intellectual honesty would be like, oh, right, this invalidates my entire thesis. But he's like, well, I'm not opening a new Word document. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, That was the theory uh, where his mockery of Donald Trump carried extra zing and sting. It Again, sure it's, like it's like he's writing about food. Yeah. Yeah. It was zesty and flavorful. <laughs> and, and he's right. I remember any line at all from that speech. Yeah. Can you remember a single word from the speech? Uh, at all? Something Can about anyone? I think he I'll said, tell my children where I was when I heard it. <laughs> uh, I think he like at one point he was asking a valet to bring his car around. That's the only yeah. thing I remember. <laughs> he, was like, he, t- he, t- he took out a... a experimental plasma rifle and just shot a big gulp out of somebody's hand. <laughs> this is a memorable event, beloved by all. And that's the idea. Well, one of the ideas behind Bloomberg's possible bid for the presidency in 2020. <sighs> you didn't hear? the only idea is just that he's an ego monster. <laughs> you didn't hear? It was a morsel of news. Easily, he's just oh, feeding God. food. He's just eating. It was a sumptuous little uh, a moose bouche of information. Uh, it was a morsel of news. He's, it's like he's like found an M M&M and M in his couch, and he's like, "Oh, I'll be having that. I'll be turning that into a column today." Uh, Bloomberg is again thinking about running, and if he forges ahead, he'll compete for the Democratic Party's nomination. Oh, yeah. To the extent that people I know reacted to this. It was with a chuckle or an eye roll vigorous enough for corneal abrasion. What most of them said was some version of, oh, great, that's just what voters want and America needs, another super rich old white guy from New York. But no two super rich old white guys from New York are exactly alike, and these two have little in common, including financially. Incorrect. One of them is a Jew. The the (laughs) best thing about Michael Bloomberg, that he's richer than Donald Trump. (laughs) Listen to this next. He invented listen a machine. This, listen to this next sentence, Felix. 
Trump's net worth, as mysterious as the Yeti, is estimated to be about three billion, while Bloomberg supposedly tops fifty billion. I look. I know that we're going to talk about how stupid this is. Like what? Like that every voter is going to be like, uh, "I'll take the richer guy, please." But can we just? I, I've kind of just two awful, awful, awful instances of Bruni's writing in like the past three sentences. One, rolling your eyes so much you get corneal abrasion. That like you happen. roll your eye so fast that your eye starts bleeding. Doesn't make sense. It cuts open. <laughs> like yeah. what? And then then. As mysterious as the Yeti. Yeah. That's <laughs> the grand mystery of the Yeti. Oh my god, this is so fucking Matt, bad. He's Matt. just I know that like we're talking about what how shitty his ideas are and how lazy he is, but he's just such a fucking bad As a writer, writer, I really think it deserves reflection. But it is also just like classic New York Times, like this feels so far just like a social column. Like it's it it feels like it's just, it's commenting on like society. It's right. like, well, guess what I heard the other day over in you know East Egg is that <laughs> Bloomberg might throw his hat in again, you know, and he's actually richer. Much yeah, it's richer. always what, oh, what yeah. his fr- how his friends responded to yeah. it. They love that, yeah. right? By the way, Matt. As two people who have now visited the International Museum of Cryptozoology, yeah. I think we can state conclusively there is no mystery to the Yeti. The Yeti is real. It's a cryptid. It's he's yeah. real. He's a real guy. He's engaged, he is located in the mountains of Central Asia yeah. and, and elsewhere. He's, he's a simple beast that wishes to be left alone. It doesn't mean he's mysterious. He just enjoys his privacy. He's Actually, the Yeti, uh, the Bigfoot, is a simple beast which wishes to be left alone. He's the North American yes, version of the Yeti. The Yeti is a dangerous, violent, malevolent creature who should be hunted and destroyed. He is more really? aggressive. Yeah. Also, more more you guys frequently are going goes on, on four this. legs uh, as opposed to the Yeti, which is always bipedal, or the Bigfoot, which is always bipedal. Uh, this I, feel like this is, I feel like this is a really elaborated upon Chris Rock bit. <laughs> oh my god! I was just gonna do that. I was oh, reaching for that. You. Like like Ricky says, great minds think a lot. <laughs> uh, oh uh, my at the, god! It's the New York Times office. Uh, Frank Brudy's like. I've got some information on the Yeti and the mystery behind it. And then it's just me raking my fingernails on a chalkboard. <laughs> you want me to find the Yeti? I'll find him for you. Kill him. Stuff him. But it'll cost you $10,000. Uh, also, sometimes appears with horns, which is never true of Bigfoot. Yes. Foot. The Yeti is a horned beast. Yeah. He's horny. He's a horned beast. He's, He's horned horny, up, folks. He's a horny toad. Anyway, not a mystery. Well-established corpus of knowledge about the Yeti. Learn your facts, Bruni. You this will be idiot. the one thing that actually gets Frank Bruni demoted. <laughs> Just that, like, his his uh, lack of knowledge of cryptids. Also, is it actually estimated that Trump is worth $3 billion? Nobody knows. I don't think he's even worth $1 billion. Zero people yeah, know how much money he actually he has. Yeah. I mean, the way that estimated he, based on what? Yeah, it, what self-reporting is the thing. It's all self-reported. I we mean, no I, I think what actually, unlike uh, cryptids, I think what is well known is that Mayor Bloomberg is one of the richest fucks. Alive. That right. is definitely known. But I do love. The it's fucking, also known that he's a Republican. But but <laughs> I love the brain just absolute disconnection of the every and the, the Clintons did this too during the campaign. Of he's not really that rich. It's like, dude, yeah. you're making people like him more. You fucking idiots. Like people don't like rich people. Like yeah. uh, he's they a like Trump in spite of the money. They liked it because the way that they thought he got it and the way that he presented himself and the fact that more than anything, and this is what all these idiots talk about billionaires, like, oh, billionaire versus billionaire. Famous person. Mm-hmm. Right. That was it. Well, he was a celebrity. He was on TV. And I think Fran Lebowitz was right that she said that he acts like the way poor people think they would act if they got money. Right, so they Well, he's, he's more or less, n- not, to, but I mean, he's more or less like a celebrity rapist. Like, that was what he was famous for. Yeah. He was like owning beauty pageants and yeah. like being in porn videos. And yeah, and that's cool for people. Right. They like that. It's relatable. It's well, like what they would do if babes. they were rich. Michael Bloomberg has a media presence too. He's the proud owner of not only the greatest financial trading terminal in the world, <laughs> the Bloomberg <laughs> Terminal. He also... Uh, Founder and namesake of the world's third most popular, well, America's third most popular business channel, yeah. Bloomberg Network. This is, right. this is actually really funny. When my, when my grandfather was still alive and he was like a, you know, uh, read the Wall Street Journal every day kind of guy. And when Mayor Bloomberg was first running for mayor of New York City and I was visiting my grandparents, he told me, I'll tell you what, finest business news network in existence. <laughs> That's why he won. Because yeah. America likes a famous America guy. America loves yeah. that shit. Uh, a cool a, guy who's famous and has sexy TV shows like The Currency Hour on at 3.30 a.m. in the morning. Great, or just great. like a really great way to look at all the stocks moving up and down. And it's a better screen for displaying it on than a regular screen. American, that 
is cool. Yeah, Americans like to get three screens, like tank from the Matrix, and just look <laughs> at all the markets go up and down, and they're like, thank you, Mr. Bloomberg, I love you. And he's like, you're welcome. But I don't even see the yen anymore. I see blonde, <laughs> 10. That's what's so perfect about it, though, because they're saying, ah, you know, he's it's, it's a different. But every contrast is against him. It makes him less relatable. It makes him someone who people are going to be less likely to want to vote for. He's all he's just he's a rich prissy asshole from New York, but instead of, you know, being like a normal person would be like, "Yeah, I'm going to get rich and I'm going to get a fucking beauty pageant. I'm just going to hide in the girls' bathroom." <laughs> uh, he's like, "I'm going to be I'm going to uh create business terminals and a boring because like yeah he, right, he like, had, he had no. the apprentice and it's like i'm gonna have a boring boring channel for stupid uh financial news people and also i'm gonna Porky's stop people president. from drinking soda stop what? drinking soda it's like they took trump and put him like in a ronco Blue- food it's, dehydrator it's, it's snobs versus snobs they want the porky's president exactly, yeah. exactly. If, they, if if bloomberg like opened a casino and like went in a hot tub on TV, then maybe he could be president. No, Can you imagine the Bloomberg Casino? <laughs> the Bloomberg Casino would be so awesome. You ju- it just like it's like using the Obamacare website. <laughs> <laughs> you just go into different wrist pulls. <laughs> so tight, dude. I love it. Yeah, I, I, I'm signing up. I could do Baccarat or or I could do the slots uh, for 15 minutes, and then I have to reapply for another another group. Oh, dude, I got and- so fucked up on Soylent. At the credit derivative swap table. No alcohol, no soda, obviously. <laughs> no smoking. Yeah, no smoking. It'd be fucking great. Versus but no, a, it's like a nice room temperature glass. It's like Trump of water. is my friend John LeCon pointed this out. Trump is big and wet and Bloomberg is small and dry. Yep. Mm. He's like he's like the he's like the beef jerky version of Trump. And everyone would rather eat a steak than beef jerky. This is the uh, Frank Bruni is saying that Bloomberg is the opposite of Trump. This is the clearly the distinction he missed. It's the only way Michael Bloomberg and Trump actually are dissimilar. Trump equals big and wet. Yeah. Bloomberg, short and dry. Right, exactly. Also, like, he's definitely not the opposite of Trump. Like, no, <laughs> not at all. So not at all. I'm just a are... prissy New York <laughs> shithead. Well, he, he's he's, he's going to go on here. He says, who is the opposite of Trump? Like Maya Angelou? <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, kind. Well, no, I was going to say Oprah, but. Not exactly, but yeah, not more really. Effective. No, not really. They got more in common than we do with her. Yeah. Uh, Tom Jode is the opposite of Trump. <laughs> uh, to those, okay, so Bruni continues here. To those of us who make do with fewer zeros and commas, that gap may seem meaningless, but you can fit the annual gross domestic gross domestic product of North Korea in it. Cool. Another awesome. really beautifully awesome. written sentence. Awesome. And America falls in line. To vote for this man. Bloomberg, 76, probably doesn't stand a chance. Oh, God. He has all the va va voom of a ficus tree and all the populism of a Bermuda golf course. Where does he get these goddamn comparisons? <laughs> these, Food are, these are the about. shittiest analogies ever. Like, no one has ever thought of, like, a golf course as the opposite of populism. Yeah. Like, it's, it's a, or a ficus it's tree a as, as like, the definitively voom. boring. Right. It's like, 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 if you were to think of like, uh, like, uh, when Bugs Bunny dressed up as a sexy lady, like the opposite of that is a, a fern. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't ficus trees actually kind of like trendy right now? I don't know. <laughs> well, I have a fiddle leaf fig, so yeah, I'm, okay, I'm, fiddle I'm leaf is what's trendy. Um, but if we're going to start putting Democrats' diverse op- options for 2020 on magazine covers, falling in and out in love with them, and magazines float- <laughs> where everyone gets their information, yeah. Uh, if we're going to start putting all of them on magazine covers, falling in and out of love with them, and floating scenarios <laughs> sublime and ridiculous, he warrants an iota of oxygen. An iota of oxygen? What? <laughs> oh, <laughs> right. Wait, no, no, no. You, you buried the lead here. Falling in and out of love with them. Come on. Just looking at I a picture. I remember when I fell in and out of love with uh, the other guy who was in the debate. With um the other Lincoln, Lincoln Chafee. Chafee. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> no, uh, dude, that's I'm, accurate. I never heady, fell out of love with Lincoln Chafee. Thank you very much, Chafee. dude. I'm never loving a bitch again after Chris Dodd's betrayal of me in 2008. <laughs> I'm standing outside of Elizabeth Warren's bedroom with holding a boombox playing <laughs> Peter Gabriel. That is very sweet. Well, this is a thing though that like libs do fall in love I mean, with true. their yeah, politicians. And one of their libs, one so of their right. one of their big criticisms of uh, like Bernie fans was like. You know, I get the impression they just like his policies. They don't really like him. And it's like, no, of course not. Of course not. You know, we don't, he's a screaming old man. No, like, or, we do or like or his other... policies. We don't have, like, a weird libidinal kind of electra complex with Hillary Clinton. No, but the other thing, the opposite of that was that there were so many people being like, 
How is it possible that an old screaming man could be so hip and trendy with young people? <laughs> and it's like, because he's saying something good that yeah, is going to yeah. help them. Like, it's not because suddenly he is the definition of sexy or something yeah. like that. Libs are, libs are personality cultists, but it's not just that. It's that they don't understand that other people are not. I wanna, I'm going to disagree with you slightly and say... I do have a libidinal desire for Bernie Sanders. I want to make toast with him at his bomb-ass lake house. <laughs> uh, okay, so he goes, uh, and he's hardly the, he goes, continuing of Bloomberg, he says, uh, he warrants an iota of oxygen, a small pocket of the breathlessly speculative space that Corey and Kamala and Elizabeth and Beto are taking up. And that's not just because he's a serious person of stratospheric accomplishment. His name is synonymous what? with... His name is synonymous with excellence, Nancy Pelosi recently said. His name is synonymous with excellence. <laughs> How old is Frank Bruni? Not that old. He's not that old. Yeah, probably his 40s. Stratospheric. Stratospheric You made a really good terminal. You guys have never used it, clearly. It's really good. It's a great terminal. He's also, from a certain angle, the Trump deplorer's dream come true, an answer to prayers for the president's opposite. If there's a Michael in the mix with a few too many of Trump's qualities and the wrong temperature for the job, it's Avenetti, not Bloomberg. Michael Avenetti is awesome. So much cooler than Michael. <laughs> oh, really? like, he, like I will say he's a lying scumbag, obviously. Like he's a weird scam artist type of guy. But also like he fucking rules. He's like <laughs> like he looks like Johnny Sins. <laughs> he does. Just like um I, you know what sealed the deal for me was when he locked his account with 764,000 followers <laughs> like to fight 4chan or something. That was just when I was like, this guy has one of the most powerful brains I've ever seen. <laughs> He's, but he, if you want to talk about someone being like Trump, it's Avenatti. It, being like Trump in the way that will let you win because right. he has the Trump thing where he's like, just anything that happens, anything people say about him, he's like, yeah, no, it's not true. I, I can't be embarrassed. It's impossible to make me feel shame or embarrassment. And like, you know, really, if you're going to do like a total head to head thing like that, not based on policies, Avenatti would be your guy because he's the only one that can counter that. Also, Avenatti actually seems to have some kind of passion for justice, like of some sort. Like he actually seems to be riled up on behalf of, you know, getting justice for his clients. Or, I mean, like Bloomberg has never been fighting for anything yeah, other than bloodless right yeah because the for most people the only person that they see on television directly appealing to them on those levels is a personal injury attorney i will fight for you <laughs> against evil <laughs> insurance companies and your boss and stuff like that michael I mean, Avenatti, the, the, they're not getting it from politicians michael Avenatti is also like he's literally the only candidate in the democratic field who i could see like actually achieving m4a if he actually did it because not because he like really gives a shit about anyone, but because I believe that he has that Lyndon Baines Johnson personality disorder where he's like, I'm going to perform this great act. I'm going to accomplish this great thing just to show that I am the only one who can do it. He knows how to fight. That's the bottom line, right? Like that's For what you. hasn't been happening. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. yeah in, a, in the manner of a personal injury yeah. lawyer. President but, Jimmy McGill. It'll yeah. be great. Uh, you said that... Uh, he, that Avenatti has the Lyndon Johnson uh, personality disorder. That's also known as having a really big dick. Huge dick. Yeah, probably. That was, that Avenatti was, has BDE. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I'm also against that whole concept. So. You're against the concept of BDE? Yeah, I think it's completely insane that like in this moment, this Me Too moment, um, that anyone would ever start talking about like big dicks as like a positive thing. Like this is just not needed right now. Yeah, I like, disagree. You need to keep your like big dick energy. It needs to just like dissipate and like linger away. Like disagree. Kind of, hard I mean, disagree. I mean, really? Okay. Big hard disagree. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's not new really. Like our culture, like every culture is always lionized big dicks. Like you remember when Michael, Michelangelo statues, with those huge dicks on them. <laughs> I remember, like, I remember you know. that. Just dragging along the ground. <laughs> Just huge, like something that like barely anyone would be that big ever. I guess I'm saying for women, like I don't think that women should be aspiring to have big dick energy because I don't think that it's the right way of, um, you know, like I feel like that's a very outdated mode 
of feminism that was big in like the early aughts where it was like, I know, like we're all just going to act like dudes and be disgusting like dudes and, you know, want to fuck all the time like dudes. And it was like, well, we didn't really like get many victories for, for hmm. I'm challenging Amber to hmm. respond. I mean, I obviously I'm opposed to uh, women uh, imitating uh, men unless, you know, they do it really well and it's hot. But I think that uh, it's just kind of a flip thing that, you know, the, the kids are, are talking about online because it memes well. Right. And also, I, I can't figure out that the targets that they're choosing to describe people as big dick energy. Yeah, I, it doesn't I, I don't, quite make sense. I, uh, Pete Davidson is dying. He's dying, <laughs> he's dying before our eyes. It's, I, don't, it's all, it's I all, don't know, like, I don't know that you could say that there's something inherently threatening about it because that man is on death's door and someone should do something. He looks terrible. <laughs> It's all it's all Pete Davidson and the ginger from this new Star Star Wars movie. Yeah, like those are oh, particularly threatening shit. representations of masculinity. That, we, that if we're celebrating big dicks, we should celebrate small dicks, and we shouldn't like make big dicks be, like feel. Oh, so we special. got the Stavros in the house. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, I believe in the synthesis, uh, Harveyism. Uh, think like a lady, act like a man. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering where you're going with that, Felix. Yeah, and I, got, go I just started directions. sweating. <laughs> I just started cold. Oh, we're not sweating. live. <laughs> it's fine, dude. <laughs> Let's just, you know, synthesis. Just average dick, good feelings, good times for everyone. Yeah, that's the Hegelian way to yeah, go. No, the, at, like, exactly. Let's go back to average penis length, three inches. <laughs> the artistic ideal. <laughs> <laughs> just like, you know, slightly too big, but it's okay. <laughs> Back to Bruni. <laughs> Back to this morsel. <laughs> the, the dick digression. Bloomberg is as insistent on order as Trump is on disorder. Whoa. As steady cool. as Trump is spastic. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Should not have used the word spastic there. That's probably He's canceled. Yeah, canceled. Frank Bruni's canceled. Like Trump won't give us a moment's peace. Bloomberg could lull us to sleep. Politically speaking, we need the REMs. Yeah, like What are ether. you talking about? Like ether. Lots yeah. of things lull you to sleep that That's are not good. Be. People like people across America are like, I love my boring, organized Jewish president. Like, <laughs> that's exactly what they want. Crying over the coffin. I love my manly Jewish president's son. <laughs> Look, I just want a president who will wheel me into a room and show me nice pastoral images while pumping fentanyl into my veins. Yeah. And then just grinding me up into fucking bone meal. Soothe me. Also, both like... Trump and Bloomberg don't have like real party affiliations. Like they're just rich guys from New York. So yeah. is yeah. that is that what Bernie's saying we need? Like that's a good thing that we should just have another completely amorphous like per person who doesn't believe anything. I don't think anything, he's but saying just... that, but I think he's picking up on it, but not f smart enough to figure out that's the similarity he's recognizing. Mm -hmm. Bloomberg is as prepared as Trump was unready. The presidency for him wouldn't be a first world at governance. Some gee whiz, why not, how hard can this be, Lark? He spent 12 years from 2002 through 2013 as New York's mayor in charge of a complicated city of more than 8 million people. Trump operates by gut. Bloomberg demands data and more data. More data, yes. <laughs> Facts. Really, he didn't really seem to care too much about data when it came to stop and frisk. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> or when it, or when he sent like helicopters to break up Occupy, like with like you know cops in like Star Wars. Do outfits. you remember what? Uh, do you remember what Mayor Bloomberg said during Occupy? Like when people were in Zuccotti Park, he said, uh, "I don't know why they're protesting bankers." He's like, "Bankers." You know, they 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 give you they give you checks. They make forty thousand dollars a year. He was literally said they said we're they, were, the they were there. They were protesting bank tellers. Well, I was. <laughs> yeah, I, I hate going to the yeah. bank, dude. They're fucking. I don't That's like the way they bullshit, look at me. Man. Why can't I take the pen? <laughs> what, yeah, put, you, you don't trust me enough to not chain that shit to the fucking table. Fuck you. That would be awesome going to Occupy Wall Street, but just because like your local bank didn't let you charge your phone in the lobby. <laughs> Oh, what the fuck, dude? I've been thinking about being a customer, but honestly, fuck you. They said a free calendar for every account open, and that shit was fucking mini. Or that was a mini calendar for a fridge. That was not, that's a fucking falsehood. Trump doesn't really have his hand on the wheel. He just wants to be the shiny hood ornament. 
Bloomberg is all pinpoint GPS navigation. Oh my god. This is the second <laughs> Bloomberg read is us, Garmin. You've read us <laughs> just two of these like unflavored bowls of grits in like the past month. And he's used the hood ornament analogy in both of them. He just he loves them. He loves a car analogy. <laughs> He didn't always steer New York in the right direction, but there was steer. never any question that he'd keep us out of the ditch. Cool. I love that that There's is a the... lot of New Yorkers in ditches right is now. Is this supposed like, literally to be an endorsement of Bloomberg? Yeah. yeah. Well, no, it's, it's the, the, the implicit assumption here, and this is something that, that Felix talked about, is how many people who just want things to be normal again. Mm. They don't care if things get better mm -hmm. that, because they're doing fine. They're, they fucking subscribe to the New York Times. Uh, they just don't want to be bothered by the news anymore. They don't want to worry that the president's unstable. So they just want the... And, the, want and it means something the to them what Nancy Pelosi says about someone. Yeah. yeah. It's like, like they want this elfin technocrat to just steer us into the fucking iceberg that is rapidly melting. And we'll all die anyway, but at least we won't hear about it until it happens. Trump is playing midwife to ever more extreme debilitating partisanship. What? This yeah. sense of metaphor is so... Boring yet gross. What rough Trump? Uh, Trump just breastfeeding a newborn. <laughs> oh, we love it. Of, of partisanship. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just a, a screaming black demon baby of partisanship. <laughs> what just fucking Damien sucking on the Trump afterbirth tits. of voter unrest. Yeah. <laughs> Trump is eating the placenta of uh, of polarization. Very cool, Frank. What rough partisanship also, it's our I'm, come I'm at last slouches towards Bethlehem to be born. I'm just as offended as calling by calling Trump a midwife as by Trump always saying witch hunt because it's like where he sees himself as a witch, which is like completely offensive for, for him to identify as a witch. Yeah, please. Magic we love it. Yeah. <laughs> Not for Trump. Thank you. Me, yeah. and, me and my girls Bushwick drinking wine. are going like, to like, come when's with the last time you read tarot cards? Me and, me, me and my wonderful friends are drinking wine and watching the craft. Oh, we love it. <laughs> <laughs> I could have had Feruza Bulk in 1992. <laughs> okay, they're going out there right now, but I'm light as a feather, stiff as a board. Like, These are wonderful crystals. <laughs> Follow my peach if you think you know me well, okay? <laughs> Folks, the bones, I found them at the graveyard. They're the, amazing. The future is I'm female. conjuring so many spirits. <laughs> All right, everybody, I'm doing a thread about uh, toxicity in the Tumblr witch community. Okay. He's Look. A, it's a special very Tumblr. Bad. It's a very special Tumblr. How could uh, it's, it's hard to envision Bloomberg doing the same, meaning creating extreme debilitating partisanship. Oh, How could he demonize Republicans, independents, or Democrats when he has been a Republican, an independent, and a Democrat? So has yeah, and Trump. So is, yes. 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 Oh my Trump was a Democrat. When you do what the that. Fuck? Also, Republicans should be demonized. They're literal it's, demons. It seriously does, like, what? That, I mean, does Frank Bruni not know that? Probably so, not. Like, parties love it when they do that, too. They, they really think someone's a, a, a really reliable also, investment Trump when they isn't, bounce around from party to party. Trump isn't like midwifing partisanship. He's like, no, he's letting out like white nationalism. Like it's not, you know, it's it's not like this is this bizarre thing where these these people just like continue to fetishize some notion of like agreement. Where, you know, there's this, like, wonderful middle where we can all be with Bloomberg and Pelosi and yeah, everyone together. Yeah, but even the people to, you know, in the sort of general right aren't big fans of him. Like, he's such a, he's such a failure on any level to meet any Bloomberg of the standards. Bloomberg has no fans. Yeah, no, exactly. He has no fans. He has no fans. <laughs> and while that may make him appear as ideologically rudderless as Trump, he's not. Many of his core positions and principles, pro-immigration, pro-choice, in favor of free trade, in support of clean air, have been intact for a long while. I love that that's one of Bloomberg's like well-known policy positions. Like I, I love, love clean it. air. Clean I breathe air. it all the time. <laughs> I breathe it in my hyperbaric chamber under my dungeon every day. Bloomberg doing the Trump stakes promo, but for air. <laughs> I breathe air all the time. It's one of my favorite gases. He's also just basically talking about the smoking ban. That's his contribution to clean air. Oh, yeah, it's yeah, ruining yeah. everyone's fun. <laughs> He's pro-transparency, too. When he was in government, he routinely released his tax returns. Though he was a shit about the fucking tax returns. Again, this is this is nerd shit. This oh is my what nerds think people care about. I'm glad that the man who hoards fifty billion dollars like didn't obtain any, any of it illegally. That makes me feel good. It's it's also just so it's so weirdly like 
the, it's like clean air. It sounds like a Don DeLillo like satire of of like a platform that someone would have. It's like my new terminal and my clean air and and my like efficient release of tax returns. Like that's going to make people really passionate about you. That's what New York Times people are passionate about. Right. And right. they have never met anyone else. Right. Um, though his station was well below the presidency and there weren't rampant suspicions about untoward influences, him, influences on him and sinister conflicts of interest. He has had complaints about journalists, but he has never sought to delegitimize journalism itself. He never would. He owns a media company. <laughs> cool. That he thinks that's good. He thinks that's good. He's like, yeah, of course. Why would he try and delegitimize it? He owns them. He owns a media company that literally employs Eli Lake and Megan McCardle. It's like it's so telling to like I know that it's like tough to be a journalist, but not this type of journalist. Yeah. Like it's very telling when like op ed writers um are like yeah, Trump's so bad, he demonizes immigrants, black people, and journalists. And it's like, oh, uh, it's very sneaky to get that one in there. I almost yeah. didn't notice. They all think they're Kim Wall. Yeah, no, they're acting like And they like might end up dying in a Turkey submarine, but that's kind of it. It's amazing. They act like a shitty op-ed journalist who, like, maybe once, like, in 2009, Trump was like, he was very unfair to me, like, is, like... We're being attacked. This is literally like living under Duterte. Like, Jesus yeah. Christ. Well, like, soon I won't be able to publish my food reviews. Yeah, that's restaurant. pretty much, yeah. He built that company from scratch without noteworthy melodrama. Trump got into real oh estate. Oh, my God. It's so boring. <laughs> Trump got into real estate courtesy of his father, who gave and lent him large amounts of money. And as he sought to grow that fortune, he sprouted lawsuits and bankruptcies like weeds. Wait. So it's like, OK, so now that Frank Bruni has slipped this in like three fourths of the way down in his column, it's finally going to take hold. Like someone's going to read it and be like, wait a minute. You're right. Trump didn't start his company and he wasn't a self-made man. <laughs> Bloomberg is fanatical about recruiting top notch talent and empowering. It. Trump picks a mix, mix of standouts and stooges and disempowers them, if they're lucky. He gave Tito Ortiz a lot of chances <laughs> on The Apprentice, actually. If, <laughs> if they're not, he disembowels them. Ask Jeff Sessions, who probably considers Mel Gibson's end in Braveheart preferable to his endless mortification. Why prayers are up, we prayers going up on for this? Jeff Sessions. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, seriously. mistreated. If Jeff Sessions did end up like William Wallace, I would honestly I would pay to watch that on Bloomberg TV. Uh, like his example of someone being unfairly treated poorly is Jeff, is Sessions. Jeff Sessions. Amazing. Dude. Is the neo confederate golem. Amazing. This fucking League of the South little goblin elf. <laughs> oh my God. This dark elf from World of Warcraft. Oh God. Bloomberg's top aides say that with him, loyalty is a two way street. With Trump, it only goes in one direction. Oh, like a one-way street. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what you're thinking of, buddy. The he's literally street. just saying, like, he's like, Trump is a sociopath. Like, Bloomberg has some regular human qualities. Like, so do a lot of other people. Like, he, he's just, you know, it's like he's comparing, he's saying Trump is only loyal in one way. Like, yes, because Trump is a freak who's different from, like, all other people. That doesn't mean Michael Bloomberg is the answer. Doesn't mean that this guy who happens to have, like, the normal way of relating to people in an organization, like, is the right answer. Yeah, that's not a rare quality. Right, exactly. It's like, I, <laughs> almost everyone else has that quality. <laughs> Bloomberg's mayoral administration was light on ethical scandals. Trump's, presi Trump's presidential <laughs> administration, why even waste the keystrokes? Good question, well, Frank. Well, you already wasted so many <laughs> telling us. Like, yeah. like, uh, why stop now, Frank? <laughs> He's like, oh, man, I already put so much energy into this one analogy about how uh, Michael Bloomberg is like the produce section and Donald Trump is the frozen food section. He's like, I can't even expend any more like, energy. I'm fucking beat, dude. He's like, Bloomberg's children are polite and nice. Trump's children, well, need I tell you that there are three of them and <laughs> yeah. there are oh maybe four. Yes. <laughs> I hate the, like, the little... His margins are really wide. <laughs> Frank Bruni widens his margins. I love Frank Bruni's, like, when he gets, like, his wry, devil-may-care style of prose. Very cool, Frank. He's like, he's like Bloomberg never raped his, any of his ex-wives. Trump, on the other hand, has been accused of it. 
Oh my Trump god. Trump is a Potemkin philanthropist. So what? much so that a Washington Post reporter, David Farrentenhold, won a Pulitzer Prize for exposing all the fakery in the Trump Foundation. And, and the attorney and it stopped him from being president. Is this article aimed at someone who has not been living like in our society <laughs> for the last yeah. yeah, All Frank Booty's <laughs> columns are like, all right, Frank, there's this guy who was recently brought out of a coma but lost uh, a quarter of the function of his brain. Uh, we, we need you to tell him what's going on. And Frank's yeah. like, Ah, I can either give him the long version or say no more. And they're like, cool, Frank, uh, don't ever fucking talk to me, the doc. I don't want to talk to you at all. The guy wakes up from a coma, and they're like, they, they take in Frank Bruni to be like, fill him in. And he goes, well, 10 years ago, we had Steve Jobs, <laughs> Hope, and Johnny Cash. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, so he goes, uh, Bloomberg is the real deal. Supporting a carefully chosen array of causes genuinely dear to him. What, like the New York Philharmonic? Clean air. And like, exactly. Yeah, that's yeah, like, all the fucking the rich bullshit he likes yeah. anyway. Uh, eight years ago. Also, I'm sorry. Trump is very much the real deal in that he believes whatever he is saying at that particular moment. <laughs> yeah. Every charity that a guy like Michael Bloomberg supports is like, yeah, it's like the opera or it's adding a new wing onto Yale. Uh, and then every once in a while they do something where it's like, oh, we're sponsoring 30 inner city kids in a way that would actually uh, actually benefits like 0.01% of the children it could benefit if I was just taxed at a more fair rate. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, uh, eight years ago, he signed the Giving Pledge, by which nearly 200 billionaires around the world have agreed to donate more than half of their wealth. In the last two years alone, he gave away more than $1 billion. Okay, yeah, I want to say what? something. Out of I want, 50. Yeah, yeah I want to <laughs> like, I want to say one thing about this idea like uh we hear this with Bill Gates a lot like he's pledged to give away all his money. Jeff Bezos just did this yeah. where it's just like he's going to give away all his money when he dies. First or like a, a portion of it. First of all, giving away 1 billion when you have 50 of it means nothing. Yeah. It's yeah. bullshit. Trump change. And again, Amber asked the right question. Who's he giving it to? The answer is in almost every instance they're giving it to a foundation His own in foundation. their name. Something yeah, tank, yeah. Some yeah. They, they're giving it to a foundation that they set up to appropriate to you know uh, appropriate the wealth that they're giving, and that most of the work and energy within that foundation goes to running and maintaining the foundation. Exactly. So, like, yeah, and and this is the other thing that they're not addressing in, that Frank Bruni is not addressing in this article is like how, the reason Bloomberg didn't join the 2016 races because he wasn't meaningfully different from Clinton and he didn't want to divide the vote that would have gone to Clinton yeah. and, and risk having Trump win. But Trump won anyway. But still now it's like, why would someone who's essentially right. no different from Hillary Clinton win? But what about this other but dry what about nerd this that no one it's likes? Like he might as well say, what about Hillary Clinton to beat Trump in 2020? You yeah, know, exactly. like that's literally how trapped in the... Well, he has one advantage over Hillary Clinton, and that is his passionate defense of Charlie Rose. <laughs> <laughs> Which no one asked him about, yeah. but he got right into it. That's my favorite thing he's done as part of this PR blitz. It's just Say, like, you know what? He sticks up for his friends. Yeah. It's just no one asked him about it, and he's like, you know, Me Too has gone too far. Honestly, like my friend Charlie, we didn't think he did anything wrong. What's up? What's up? <laughs> Is Charlie Rose still going to start his talk show where he only interviews men who have been Me Too'd? Because oh that my is, God, that I was a that real was thing. a trial balloon. I don't know if that's well, actually happening. Well, I'm for it. I'm trying to float that balloon back <laughs> up into the air because I think that's the best thing for everyone. Because I'm we're like a YouTube. Say, oh, is Louis going to come back and be like, you could be like, yes, he's going to be on Charlie Rose's Me Too Exile talk show <laughs> next week. You know, like it would just be the perfect launching pad. Well, also, network executives. Like, who would go on that? Everyone. Well, None of them would agree. Anyone who ever wanted to come back would be like, no, I'm not going no, on that. No, you would have to. It would be mandated. You, that's part of your rehabilitation. Oh, so it's like, okay. The first thing is you have to go on the show. Char well, I'm, sentencing. I'm, 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 I'm currently, I'm currently uh, pitching to networks my Me Too Takashi's Castle idea, where whoever completes the <laughs> obstacle course... <laughs> Gets to return to entertainment. American Me Too warrior. Yeah. Me Too oh Double Dare. <laughs> That's some oh, wait, didn't the Double Dare host actually do get... I don't morally agree with the idea, but it's just like, you know... I. Ideas shared, money, on, dude. ideas shared on a podcast are intellectual property and cannot be stolen. Ah, oh, shit, good call, Will. <laughs> uh, we covered our ass in that one. Oh, thank you. Uh, so, so Brody, actually, he gets into some criticism of Bloomberg here. He goes, he has gaping blind spots... 
which were described in a recent story about his potential candidacy by my Times colleagues Alexander Burns and Sidney Ember. I was floored that he dig digressed in an interview with Burns to wonder about the accusations against Charlie Rose. <laughs> It's like I was floored that he was a 76-year-old man. Yeah. <laughs> Although Blo and though Bloomberg during his mayoralty famously rode the subways, he never managed to seem of the subways. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. I, 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 I think he was not a mole kind person. Of, you know, I, I think he's like a little bit rat-like. <laughs> Bloomberg, uh, Bloomberg just gets on the subway. Um, attention. Attention, ladies and gentlemen, I'm out here trying to do something positive for New York City. It's showtime. It's the time for the show. It's the time for the show, everybody. Bloomberg, Bloomberg does showtime, but it's just reciting the U.S. dollar exchanges to other foreign currencies. Like, Everyone's like, yeah, even go. Um, look, lived. I'm out here. I am not selling drugs. I am not gangbanging. I am making a decent listening. I'm trying to imagine do, uh, Bloomberg doing like the, the showtime style tumbling like the, uh, through the subway car, but like his version of that is just sort of sitting down and then standing up again. And he's like, ta da! I can't wait till Bloomberg goes on Ellen and Dabs. It's gonna be the like, greatest day of my entire life. Bloomberg's candidacy began with the change he got in return for all the cans he collected while living underground. <laughs> Bloomberg got arrested for stealing all those decommissioned MTA buses. <laughs> He, uh, he never seemed. He, he never managed to seem of the subways. Of the subways. But then the 2016 election has left me confused about who should, could, and does have the ability to connect with middle Not class Bloomberg. and blue collar Americans. <laughs> yeah, we'll do it. <laughs> Many of them saw a champion in Trump. It's funny. Republican voters came to embrace Trump, and then Republican lawmakers meekly followed suit, though he hadn't done all that much for the party before. Democratic voters are probably less inclined to embrace Bloomberg, but he has pumped substantial sums of money into initiatives regarding gun control, LGBT rights, climate change, and more that matter to them. That doesn't make him their best choice. It certainly doesn't make him their likely one, but I hope it elicits their respect and, if he pursues this thing, an open-minded assessment. So many of the virtues lost on Trump are found in him. Let's celebrate that as a way of making sure that the party's eventual nominee possesses them in robust measure. The only qualities that I like about Trump are missing in Bloomberg. Yeah. Isn't there an article about how he's a horrible sex creep and like harassment? Bloomberg? Yeah. We should probably, you know, just to, to, to not get sued, but if you had to guess. <laughs> well, there was a whole article guess. about like his treatment of his underlings and stuff. And one of the stories is like a woman, one of his underlings told him she was pregnant. He said, kill it. What? Yes. <laughs> well, he, he has always been staunchly pro-choice. He's pro-choice, <laughs> yeah. It does appear that um, Bloomberg has been met with a lot of pregnancy discrimination clauses. Yes, hmm. this, yes, I was not correct. In 1996, four women sued him. One of them alleges that when she saw, told him she was pregnant, one of his underlings, he said, quote, kill it. Okay. <laughs> cool guy. Real cool guy. Yep. Very chill. 